All right, guys, I think we're ready. I'm kind of nervous, but let's see what happens. All right, guys, we are finally back at it on Project Vert. I finally got some of my parts in the mail for it, and that means I'm gonna go ahead and put the GT back on hold so that we can get this thing done. First hurdle that we need to jump over before we start putting everything together is we need to get this pin fixed. You guys can see one of our timing little guide pins is completely snapped off in there. That is our problem. That's why we've been having issues with our timing being off. As you can see, that's what it normally looks like. So that is a little bit of a problem. I have a nice new Gates timing kit right here, which we will continue to unbox later. Main thing for now is we have this little pin here for our timing. This is a genuine Mopar pin. I got it on Rock Auto for, I think, about like two dollars and thankfully it shipped with the timing kit so I didn't have to like pay ungodly amounts of shipping just for this because look at that's literally all it is this little piece of crap pin so what we're gonna have to do is drill out whatever we can of the previous pin which is gonna be a little sketchy we're gonna have to be really careful and then we're gonna go ahead and have to tap this in I don't know if we're gonna use any heat or anything to do it I don't want to like melt our cam seal or anything from what everybody says if you get a smaller hammer and gently gently carefully tap this in it works out just fine so here's hoping that it does so I actually lowered the motor down just a tiny bit with the motor fully jacked up. It was actually proving to be more of a challenge because our drill was hitting even when we had the motor jacked up all the way. But with it down a little bit, I'm able to position the drill down in here like so and actually get at a better angle. Guys, that last bit did the trick. Our hole is completely cleaned out. I stepped up from, I believe, a 330 seconds, which is like really small, to a 964. And you can see on that last one, it actually took the very last bit of the pin with it. So our only problem is, I don't know if our bit was a little, just like ever so slightly too big or not, but our pin is actually sliding in way too freely. Thankfully, once it's in there, it does not wiggle at all. So we don't have to worry about it like being out of time. It's really solid in there, but it's just, there's no way to pound it in to keep it in. So I might coat it very lightly with some JB Weld just to make sure that it stays in. But um, we're on the home stretch now. Clean this out with some brake parts cleaner first. Perfect. I think we're good. Our pin is officially back in, which is huge. I'm gonna go ahead and give that plenty of time to cure, but we are officially one step in the right direction, which I am super excited about. Give this whole area a little initial cleanup with what I had left of that brake parts cleaner can. And now everything is looking good. And we got some of the debris that was around here out of the way so that I can do our cam seals without worrying. That popped out really easily actually. You can see there's space in there so that you can drill and just as long as you're careful not to poke, that works perfectly to pop these out. Man, those came out really, really easy. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up with a little bit of this purple power degreaser and some of this really crappy steel wool kind of stuff. I'm gonna hit them with a little bit more brake parts cleaner. Got this little pipe coupler. It's just big enough that it fits over this, but the only thing is I wish it would fit like in the concave here, but it's just a little too big. If we have to, we could file some off to fully pound our seal in. Essentially, we're gonna put our new seal on here and very, very gently tap it in with this piece of pipe. Very simple. They make little tools that you can screw them in with that might be a little safer, but this should work. And 
and I think I messed up. All right, so I went ahead and fixed my mistakes here with the cam seals, and I'll be talking more about it in the next video, but basically using the gray stuff on these or any sort of like gasket maker or, or anything on these is probably not the best idea because the clearances are so tight, and especially these, they were like part metal. They weren't full uh, rubber outside, so I, they might seal better, but I don't know, other aftermarket gaskets might uh, fit in there better or might be easier to tap in, but you just gotta be really careful. And again, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it and uh, go a little bit more in depth in part two of timing belt the movie on the other car. That was unfortunate, but we got her in there. I wanna go ahead and unbox our new Gates timing kit. Bought this all as a kit on Rock Auto. It comes with our new water pump, our new tensioner and idler, as well as, of course, our new belt. Pretty cool stuff. It's really cool how you can see like the webbing or whatever in the side. Kinda neat, but there's that. And here's our new tensioners. Nice shiny new water pump and a gasket. And of course, our idler pulley. So since this gasket doesn't like fit in here. What I am gonna do is go ahead and use a couple small dabs of gasket maker in a couple spots to keep this gasket seated in place perfectly so that when we put it in the car, it will stay perfectly seated and we won't have it slip or anything while we're trying to put it in. I'm gonna go ahead and use the red stuff as well. Just a few very small dabs. Make sure I don't accidentally get some on the inside here. Carefully set our gasket in. All right, I think that should do it. I'm just gonna let that set up for a little bit. All right, and now that that has set up for a couple minutes, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw our pump in there. And I'm gonna be covering it uh, a little bit more in depth in the next video, so I'm gonna throw it in and check back in when it's done. All right, water pump is in and torqued to spec. And I just went ahead and threw our tensioner in. I just got the one bolt in hand tight, but basically one of the bolts for the mount plate goes through that arm. And we're going to steal it out of the plate and stick it in here temporarily while we tighten down our other bolt just so that we make sure it's lined up. All right, that's torqued. We can go ahead and remove other bolt here and put that back on our plate. Now that that little thing is done, now we can go ahead and throw on the rest of our stuff and get ready to put our belt on. Guys, I made a little bit of a mistake. I um I forgot about my timing cover. <laughs> Whoops. Uh. All right guys, take two. <laughs> Looks a little bit better now. I even got our new motor mount in, which I forgot to do before as well. We got our timing cover back in. So now we just gotta go ahead and torque our nuts and uh, we're good to start routing our belt. Guys, I got our belt kind of on. I fiddled with this for quite a while off camera, and you can see I had these little clips holding it. I think it's gonna be close to time. I hope it's on, we'll see. Might have to adjust it at two through two, but um, this is our attempt one at getting it in time. It is quite a bit of a pain to get it on the tension pulley, but I will again be covering all of this in depth when we do timing belt, the movie, <laughs> part two on that car. So be sure to stay tuned for that. If you haven't seen part one, be sure to check it out. We got it in here, which is huge. And um, it looks good, our slack looks good. And I think we're pretty close to our timing mark, but we're gonna see, we're gonna verify it. I gotta go ahead and tighten the tensioner and then spin our crank a couple times to just kind of get the slack out of everything and make sure she's good. So let's see what happens. Using my phone camera with the light to get our alignment groove lined up. All right, hopefully that stayed lined up. It's kind of a pain in the butt. All right, our tensioner is still lined up, so I'm just gonna turn this a few cranks, get any slack out of the belt. All right, we got her perfectly on there, I think. Mm, nope, I think we got our tooth off. 2,000 years late. All right, I fiddled around with the belt some more and I brought the tooth uh, one over and uh, I spun the crank a few times. I got our, our uh, little alignment thing on the tensioner lined up and everything and um, we're looking Perfect. According to this part of the factory service manual that I printed, you're supposed to spin the crank a few times to seat everything, and then your mark should be pretty much right on when your crank is centered, and uh, that's what we're looking at right now. So now it's time to move on to our next step, which is 
finally block testing the car. A lot of debate on the internet whether block tests are accurate or not, but we've had great success with them in the past, and that's what I'm gonna do is to kind of make sure that everything is okay, or figure out if there is something wrong with our head, which I highly doubt, but we just gotta make sure because we don't know the severity of our overheating issue. But since we got this put together, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna put it together anymore. I might put one bolt in our motor mount here just to make sure that it doesn't flap around. But now what we're gonna do is go ahead and clean up the front of the motor here. Then we're gonna go ahead and set our radiator back in here just so that we have some cooling so that we can warm the car up and really do a good accurate block test. But I am going to do that with everything still taken apart and with the motor mounts off. My plan right now is to use my engine crane, which is right here. I have a little two ton Harbor Freight engine crane here. I'm gonna bring that over into here and use that to support the motor while we do our testing and make sure that everything is good to go. But first things first, let's go ahead and start doing some cleaning up and uh, then we can throw our cooling back in. Well guys, not quite. Of course, something super, super stupid and little would keep me from finally starting this thing up tonight. So this right here is the fancy schmancy drain plug on the radiator. When I drained the coolant and it popped out of its little socket, it's supposed to like stay locked in there. Not a big deal. So I went to go ahead and push it back in. When I was pushing it in, this little O-ring was just slightly off. And when it finally clipped in, it broke the O-ring and now we're screwed. <laughs> Tomorrow. All right guys, a new day and a new o-ring. <laughs> Looks like it should fit on perfectly. Let's see. Nice tight fit. And a couple minutes with a pair of pliers later, we got the drain plugged in, it popped right in, and we should be good to go to start adding water. But first, of course, we gotta go ahead and get our engine crane out here and figure out a way to get it situated here over the motor so that we can support it while we start it. All right, so here's the setup I got going. Um, probably a little bit sketchy and there's probably better ways to do it. But since we're literally just trying to support this end of the motor, I think this will work perfect. I have a bolt going through our power steering pump bracket that's holding the chain there. And I just very carefully have it lined up so it doesn't pinch our one heater hose that goes over here. And I have it hooked to our alternator bracket over here. People use those brackets sometimes to lift the motor out of the car, lower it out of the car. I probably wouldn't do that if I was like actually I'm lifting the motor out or trying to do something like that. I would probably want to support it better. I already got tension on it and as you can see my jack is completely free back up. So now all we should have to do is add a bunch of water to our radiator and stuff. And another day later we finally have our new drain plug. I ended up getting a whole new drain plug and I feel like an absolute idiot. And I gotta show you guys because you're gonna laugh. Put a new o-ring on this drain plug and it was still leaking. So I'm like what? Like what is wrong with this? Maybe the o-ring is just slightly too small. Couldn't figure it out So I decided to screw it and order a new one. I couldn't figure out anything I didn't have any spare ones here. I get our new one and the o-ring is right there and not up here So that was our problem <laughs> the whole time. I mean, I have a spare one now, I guess so that was really stupid, but it's okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw this back in the car. I'm gonna throw this new one in because we have it and why not? Well, shoot guys, it's actually holding water now. It's a miracle. <laughs> I actually raised the motor up a little bit more. Just an interesting little thing, but the water was not wanting to drain in. Once I raised the center of the motor up some more, um, it started going in really easily. So just something to think about. If you ever have issues with um, getting water to go in there, it does help to have it on an angle there because then it can flow. All right, guys, I think we're ready. I've looked everything over. We got the water topped off. Um, there's nothing that's gonna ever get in the way of our timing belt. I went ahead and hooked our cruise control thing back up and the lines back up temporarily just so that we don't get a giant boost leak when we started. Threw our ground wire back in there on a bolt. There's nothing hanging here. I got everything kind of elevated temporarily. Got our battery hooked back up. I don't see anything, anything that could be wrong. Of course, we don't have our alternator and our power string and stuff hooked up, so we aren't gonna be charging or anything because we don't have our uh, crank sprocket on. Hopefully this holds okay. Okay, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but let's see what happens. Okay, I don't think our fuel pump primed. Yeah, I don't hear a fuel pump prime.
Okay, so that's a problem. Okay, we're getting a flashing engine light, so maybe that'll tell us something. Okay, so it looks like an EVAP code, and it says circuit high, which makes me wonder if maybe a ground wire is disconnected or a ground strap. Maybe our ground strap on that side of the motor is disconnected. So on both sides of the front of the car, over in there and over in here, there are ground straps. You can see all those black wires there, that little spaghetti going to this thing. It's all our grounds. And um, I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like a bunch of them tore out. Probably when I was moving these wires around to get at everything, this was already corroded, and they just went, yeah. So I'm betting dollars to donuts that that is our issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo that. As you guys can now see, there's our wires. I went ahead and pulled them out of our little thing here. And trimmed what I had to. Um, it was pretty shot. Wires were definitely free already. So, gotta go ahead and strip the coating off of all of these. I think there's how many? Seven, eight, there's nine wires in total on this. I have this new little eyelet that I'm just gonna crimp on there. Eternity later. All right guys, that was a bit of a pain, but I got a semi-temporary solution going on here. I got the wires twisted together and crimped the best I could. Um, it was really hard to get them stripped because because they were just so corroded. I mean, you guys can see just like how bad they were in the old one. And uh, the ends of the wires were pretty bad. So I cut them back a tiny bit, but I didn't want to get too ahead of myself. Then we'll have to redo it with an eye hook that's better and maybe solder something up so that this stays solid. But it's time to try again. <laughs> okay, that started right up. It is idling high. The car is stabilized and sounds really, really good actually. Like it sounds like it's running really well which i'm really excited about so um hopefully this goes well Let's give it a little rest it sounds so good i can't imagine that there's any issues so far everything is going well all right guys she's right at operating temperature i got our fluid in our block tester right up to the line so here's hoping this goes okay Alright guys, so our initial block test has been passed, which is really huge. I'm gonna try to do a second one just to make sure. Oh, I got a, I got a stripe of grease on my face. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do another one just to double check and make sure because, you know, I want to be 100% positive before we go ahead and really start buttoning everything up. The car sounds really really healthy, no engine noise. We should be good. I'm wondering if though, if we are dealing with maybe a stuck thermostat or a clogged radiator or something like that, um, it could be a possibility because the car did seem to warm up pretty quickly and probably if I had kept going, um, it, it might have overheated. So it is a possibility, but it doesn't seem to be head related at least. Just from our block test and from initial inspection, nothing, nothing is showing any sort of head issue, which I didn't think so from the beginning, but I'm feeling even more confident with that. At this point, only time will tell, but this is a very positive way, I guess, to end our first episode. We got our initial timing all set back up. It seems to be in time as well. I was a little worried we were a tooth off. We're going to double check that as well. Car runs really well, but I don't really know what else to say. It looks like we're good to go, and uh, we can continue to progress. So in the next episode, you're going to see us redo some suspension components, continue to button everything up, double check everything, make sure we're good to go. This was our initial put together and test video. I'm very happy with the results of it, that's for sure. So the next episode, we're really gonna be buttoning things up, maybe even going for our first drive. I don't know, we'll see. But this thing is very close, maybe a couple days away from hitting the road again, as long as we don't run into any major roadblocks. We also need to fix our oil pressure gauge, and I'm probably going to try to wire up an oil pressure gauge temporarily, just to make sure that um, we're good there before we throw everything together. So all of that you have to look forward to in the next episode. It's going to be a big one, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We made some huge progress, and I can't wait to get both these cars done. Be sure to stay tuned for Timing Belt, the movie part two as well coming on this car. But again, guys, thank you so much for the support on this project, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Give it a fat thumbs up if you did. If you haven't already subscribed, you gotta go down there, hit that subscribe button, and turn on your notifications. And thanks again, guys. You rock. God bless, and I will see you in the next one. Place,